Welcome to this training DVD about Incinerators Type Atlas. This DVD will guide you through the most important issues you will encounter when operating and maintaining the incinerator. For your own comfort and safety, please always remember the following guidelines. Always operate the incinerator in accordance with the instruction manual. Do never attempt to override any of the safety features. Do never attempt to open the doors to the combustion chamber during operation. This is damaging for the health as the temperature inside is 1000 degrees Celsius. Follow the guidelines from national authorities and IMO concerning type of waste to be burned and disposal of ashes. Do not feed more waste into the incinerator than the rated capacity. When burning plastic, oily rags and oil filters, be careful not to exceed the rated incinerator capacity. Only skilled and specially trained personnel should carry out maintenance and repairs. Since oil sludge mainly contains remains of the heavy fuel oil, it's necessary to heat it up before trying to burn it. It is a good idea to heat up the sludge oil to around 60 to 70 degrees Celsius before trying to incinerate it. You can read the temperature on the thermometer installed on the tank. Start the heating up of the sludge oil preparation tank 4 to 8 hours before you intend to start the incinerator up. To make the heating up as efficient as possible, you should switch the main switch to the on position on the incinerator control panel. This will make the mill pump and the sludge circulation pump start up and sludge oil is circulated and heated up. Before feeding waste into the incinerator, it is important that you remember to blend it properly. Blending waste ensures a faster burning and helps to secure that the incinerating capacity is not exceeded. It is a good idea to use paper bags, plastic bags or cardboard boxes for feeding the waste into the incinerator. The waste in each bag should be blended as follows. 15% paper 20% cardboard, 10% plastic, 5% oily rags, 50% food waste. The amount of oily products and plastics in each batch should always be limited as these products have a very high calorific value. Too much of these products can cause overheating and damage the incinerator's internal heat resistant coating. Before using the incinerator, you will need to prepare it for operation. To do so, start by turning the incinerator main switch to the on position if it's not already done. You are now ready to go through the preparation process. To secure that no flue gases escape to the machinery room, you should always ensure that you have vacuum in the combustion chamber. The vacuum can be checked on the U-tube. On the flue gas outlet, close the damper until you have approximately 400 pascal vacuum on the U-tube. The next step is adjusting the air nozzles. The air nozzles lead air from the cooling air jacket into the combustion chambers. Adjust all the air nozzles by turning them clockwise until they are completely closed. This will give the shortest heating up period of the incinerator and reduce the consumption of diesel oil. Finally, you need to adjust the dampers. This will help to obtain a proper flame on the diesel oil burners. Adjust the dampers on the diesel oil burners to approximately 20% open position. Adjust the damper on the sludge burner 
to approximately 20% open position. The incinerator is now ready for operation. To operate the incinerator, start by turning the start switch to the start position. The incinerator will now automatically start up the burners and go through the following procedure. First, the oil burner in the secondary chamber will start. Be sure to monitor the vacuum in the combustion chamber and adjust the damper on the mixing chamber to between 200 and 300 pascal vacuum if required. After 10 to 20 minutes, when the temperature in the secondary combustion chamber reaches 400 degrees Celsius, the burner in the primary combustion chamber will start. Now open the air nozzles again by turning them counterclockwise approximately one quarter of a turn and secure the position by the counter nut. Monitor the vacuum again and adjust the vacuum on the damper on the mixing chamber to be 200 to 300 pascal. When the temperature in the primary combustion chamber reaches 600 degrees Celsius, the sludge burner damper will automatically open and the sludge dosing pump will start dosing sludge into the combustion chamber, which will be ignited by the primary burner. Monitor the vacuum in the combustion chamber and adjust the vacuum on the damper on the mixing chamber to be 200 to 300 pascal. Now the incinerator is ready for incineration. If you have prepared the incinerator for operation, you are now ready to start incinerating your waste. Make sure the waste is prepared in bags, cardboard boxes or similar, and place one bag in the sluice. Push the push button for activating the sluice. The light in the push button comes on and the waste automatically slides into the combustion chamber. When the sluice operation is complete, the light turns off again. Wait a couple of minutes and then check through the sight glass that there is space for the next bag in the combustion chamber. Then feed in the next bag. During this process, be sure to check the chimney outlet for black smoke. If the smoke is black, open the air nozzles in both the primary and the secondary combustion chambers with one turn and check again after a couple of minutes. Always monitor the vacuum in the combustion chamber and secure a vacuum. Do not open the air nozzles more than required. If there are sparks in the smoke, then open the air nozzle in the secondary combustion chamber. After feeding in the last bag, turn the start switch to the stop position. The incinerator will stop automatically when it is completely burned out. The incinerator will now cool down. During the cooling process, the primary blower will start and stop some times before the incinerator is completely cooled down. Then remove the ashes and dispose in accordance with IMO and local national regulations. To secure trouble-free operation of the incinerator, it should always be maintained in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. The requirement for service is described in the operation manual, but here we will guide you through the most important items. When oil burners have been used for an extended period of time, filters may be blocked, nozzles might be worn, and soot might have settled on the ignition electrodes. To prevent problems, you should carry out the following service.
Begin by switching off the incinerator. Then check that the diesel oil supply and return lines are closed. It is now safe to dismantle the burner. Next step is to dismantle the filter and clean or replace it. Now remove the burner pipe and replace the oil nozzle. At the same time, make sure you check and clean or replace ignition cables and electrodes. Before you assemble the burner again, remember to adjust the electrodes. The tips of the electrodes should be approximately 9.5 mm from the center of the diesel oil nozzle and the distance between the tips should be approximately 3 to 4 mm. Finally, assemble the burner and reinstall it. This routine should be carried out for every 2,000 hours of operation. Flame detectors are wear items and have only a limited lifetime as they are directly exposed to the strong radiation heating and sooting from the combustion chambers. To service and to check the condition of the detectors, you should carry out the following procedure. Begin by switching off the incinerator. Then remove the flame detectors one by one on the burners and clean them for soot with a soft cloth. Inspect them for any damages like cracks or melting. Finally, reinstall the flame detectors. This routine should be carried out for every 500 hours of operation. If you want to check the functionality of the flame detectors, this can be done by placing a lighter in front of the flame detector and monitor that the bulb on the flame control boxes lights up. The thermocouples are installed directly into the combustion chambers and in the chimney. This position exposes them to strong heat which can potentially damage them over time. Therefore, the thermocouples should be checked frequently and this can be done in the following manner. Begin by switching off the incinerator. Then dismantle the thermocouples one by one. Clean each of the thermocouples with a wire brush. At the same time, you should also check them for any mechanical damages like cracks and replace them if necessary. Finally, reinstall the thermocouples. Before starting up the incinerator again, check the reading on the controllers. They should read room temperature if the incinerator has been stopped for a longer period of time. This routine should be carried out for every 2000 hours of operation. If the sludge dosing and oil circulation pumps are not serviced, they will not give pressure and you are not able to start the sludge oil incineration process. The pumps consist of a stator made out of rubber and a rotor of stainless steel and they can be serviced by following the procedure shown to you here. Begin by switching the main switch on the incinerator to the off position. Then remove the two nuts at the non-motor end of the pump, keeping the pump together, and remove the two stays. Next step is to gently turn the stator outwards and pull it away. 
Now you can easily replace this data if it looks worn. Finally, you can install the news data and assemble the pump again. Don't forget to carefully check the serviced pumps for any leakages when they are started up again. This data is a typical wear item that has to be inspected for every 1000 hours of operation. Should a malfunction occur, the incinerator will shift to cooling. We will now go through these alarms one by one. The most common reason for a flame failure is lack of oil supply. Check that diesel oil is led to the incinerator and that the return pipe is open. Also check that there is oil pressure on the burner by reading the pressure gauge which should read 10 to 12 bar. If everything is in order, the next step is to check the condition of the burner. Dismantle the burner as explained in the service section and clean filter and check ignition electrodes and ignition cables. Inspect the diesel oil nozzle. Also clean the flame detector for possible suit and the condition of it and replace if required. If you have a flame failure on the sludge burner, check the temperature of the old sludge. This has to be minimum around 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. Also you must evaluate whether the sludge circulation pump and sludge dosing pump stators are worn and need replacement. The most common reason for this type of alarm is that too much waste or waste with a too high calorific value has been loaded into the incinerator. To fix this, let the waste burn out for approximately half an hour. Then restart the incinerator and reduce the waste loading into the incinerator. Another reason for the alarm can be that the thermocouple is defect. So remember to check the thermocouple and replace it if you find it to be damaged. The main reason for this type of alarm is that the air intake to the primary blower has been stopped by a foreign object. If you get this alarm, you should therefore inspect the air intake and remove possible foreign objects. This type of alarm comes up when one of the circuit breakers has tripped. To fix this, you should first check the circuit breakers and the motors for condition. If everything is found to be in order, reset the circuit breaker and try to restart the incinerator. The incinerator should always be operated with a vacuum in the combustion chamber. If this is not the case, this alarm will come on. If too much waste has been loaded into the combustion chamber, a lot of flue gases will be generated and it is difficult to maintain the vacuum. To build up the vacuum again, do not feed in more waste but let the waste burn out the next half an hour and restart the incinerator. You can also try to open the damper on the mixing chamber, this can in many cases increase the vacuum. Finally, you can check the opening of the air nozzles Closing these with one turn clockwise will increase the vacuum. This alarm comes when the temperature in the funnel system is higher than expected. A frequent reason for this alarm is that the thermocouple in the funnel is faulty. To fix this, find and replace the faulty thermocouple. Another reason can be that the calorific value of the waste is too high. The way to solve this is by reducing the loading of waste into the incinerator. Finally, 
A different approach to overcoming this problem is to add more cooling air to the flue gases. This can be done by opening the air nozzles in the secondary chamber. Thank you for watching. In case you need spares or you prefer to have a service engineer to attend the vessel, please do not hesitate to contact us.